hyperbolics. So this may be the first time you see hyperbolics. You may have touch base on this type of functions in pre-calculus, maybe not. So even if you didn't, that's fine. We are not assuming that that, uh, that you did, but uh, sometimes, well, depending on where you took the, where you took the, the pre-calculus course, you, you may or may not call it. Okay, so hyperbolic functions, uh, you will find out as we progress through this section, to, to the topic. They have a lot of similarities with the trigonometric functions, but uh, at the same time, they have like really big differences that, but still there, they make like really interesting connections. So number one, uh, one of the similarities with the, with the trigonometric functions, they're the notation, you know, except that, for example, uh, we call these hyperbolic functions the hyperbolic sine, the hyperbolic cosine, or for short, sinh, cosh, tanh, sitch, etc. Right? So, and it's their notation what makes them look very similar to the trigonometric functions. Now, what is the main difference between the trigonometric functions and the hyperbolic functions? So, well, the hyperbolic functions on the, I mean, the trigonometric functions on the one hand, they're periodic functions. They output values that lie around the unit circle. Well, for the sake of simplicity, we use the unit circle. Of course, that circle can have your favorite radii, right? But uh, let's make this simple. So each point around the circle has two coordinates, x and y, which correspond to cosine and sine, respectively, all right? So that's from regular trigonometry, not from hyperbolic trigonometry. So from hyperbolics, uh, these points are ordered pairs that lie around a hype. Uh, well, uh, it's kind of weird to say this, uh, a unit hyperbola, well, because it's easier to see the unit circle, you know, the radius equals to one, but, uh, but why do we call it anyway, the unit hyperbola? Well, because this hyperbola is constructed by one unit in each direction from, the cent from its center. And of course, for the sake of simplicity, we take the case where the center is the origin. Of course, you can shift it in your, to your favorite point, but uh, let's keep it simple. All right, so cosh and cinch. So those are the differences, but of course, I mean, it's the same position. Cos with cos for x and sine to sin for the y's. All right, so of course, there are inverse hyperbolic functions for which uh, we will mention them real quick. I won't test you on them. Uh, you won't be required to memorize any relations for the inverse hyperbolics. Nevertheless, when you go to your higher levels of math and like uh, functions of complex variables or complex analysis, depending on the name of the class, which is an awesome classes that uh, puts together uh, the complex num the world of, of the complex number with the trigonometric functions and hyperbolics, and it's well if you if you are set to take that class, if you're like an in electrical engineering, civil engineering. Uh, you're going to blow your mind with the results and the connections with the functions to, to, the, to the actual function that you have studied uh, up to this point, the real, fun, the real function. You'll see, well, I don't want to um, go off topic for too long. All right, so th this is what it is, you know, so that's the point cosh and sinh for just like cosine and sine. And of course, another similarity, let's go back to the similarity, is the identities. Uh, so sinh and cosh, and, but in this case, we don't define, okay, let's go back to the differences again. Sorry, I'm gonna, we're gonna go back and forth between similarities and differences. So again, recall the trigonometric functions are defined by angles. These are periodic, uh, two pi periodic in particular for sine and cosine, and pi periodic for the tangent functions, right? However, the 
hyperbolic functions do not go around in a circle. They are points that lie around uh, well, along a hyperbola. So if you look at the domain, uh, well, or rather if you look at the range, that's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, you know, and that's what um, this type of function, the exponential function, has got, right? So let's see. Uh, the ones that you need to know only, just know that sinh is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2, and cosh is e to the x plus e to the negative x. So the difference between the two is that the sinh function has a negative in between the exponential, and the cosh function has a positive sign in between the exponentials, right? And the second term has a negative in the exponent. So that's that's the main difference. Of course, from here, you can derive the remaining four hyperbolic functions. And again, this is back to some of the uh, similarities. Uh, tang is sinh over cosh in the same way that co the tangent is the same as sine, is, is equal to sine over cosine. And cos, uh, that one is it's a little bit weird to pronounce it, cos. Uh, it's cosh over sinh, just the same as cotangent is cosine over sine. And of course, there are the basic reciprocal identities, secant 1 over cosine, sec equals 1 over cosh, and cosecant equals 1 over sine. That means cosec over, e equals 1 over sec. All right? So, and let's define this using exponentials. Uh, so this will be um, e to the x plus e to the negative x over e to the x minus e to the negative x. And you might ask, where did the twos go? Well, because we're dividing these two expressions, those twos get canceled. And then will be just a reciprocal, e to the x minus e to the negative x, and e to the x plus e to the negative x. For the remaining two, all we need is to find the reciprocal of sinh and cosh respectively. So instead of having e to the x plus e to the negative 2x over 2, minus so of course you don't have to you don't really have to memorize the six just knowing the first two in the same way that you derive the, the regular trigonometric functions you can come up with these relations for all six functions uh, and well like any other kind of new function well especially in a calculus class so first we do the definitions and then the next step is to do some arithmetics and then some algebra and then finally the calculus and well hyperbolics uh, it's not going to be the exception so let's work with some with some of the functions since of negative one so well let's have these um, the relations here so we can use them well since is e minus e to the negative over two and all we do is replace x with negative 1, with the input, you know? So, well, e to the negative 1 is simply e to the negative 1, all right? And, well, what's going to happen here? Minus negative 1. Positive. So, have you ever heard of the smile rule? So, so negative times a negative is positive because what do we have? A smile be positive? Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's very cheesy, I know, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. E to the first and over two. So then from here, so that's one over e of uh, minus e over 1, this e to the first is simply e, which is, again, as well, e, to e over 1, and over 2. So what do we have? We have a complex fraction here that we need to simplify, all right? And to simplify this, well, uh, multiply numerator and denominator by uh, the LCD. 
that is the quantity that will divide out E and 1, also an indivisible 1 here, and in this case is E over E, all right? So distribute E times 1 over E. Don't the E's cancel? So that's simply 1, and E minus, rather, E times E, that's E squared. And then just multiply across, just multiply across 2 times e, which is simply 2e. And typically we get, we actually leave this in exact form, unless otherwise you're asked to give the results in maybe three decimal places, four decimal places, which is the typical number of decimal places for exponentials and logarithms. All right? Questions about this one? All right, let's look at the next one. Tang ln of 2. Okay, so we have a composition of hyperbolics and logarithms. And yes, looks like it's going to be a little bit um, elaborate, but trust me, you'll see what's going to happen here. So number one, tang. Tang, which we have over here, that's e minus e to the negative over e plus e to the negative, and let's replace with ln of 2, ln of 2, ln of 2, ln of 2. I didn't need parentheses here. All right. So, yes, looks, looks a little bit ugly, but check this out. We can cancel out the exponential with the logarithms for these two, right? because they're inverse functions of one another. However, can I do the same over here? No, in a, in a way you can think of this like these two are kind of locked with the negative coefficient, so we need, we need basketball rule here, all right? So that's gonna be well two minus e to the ln of two to the negative one divided by two plus e to the ln of 2 to the negative 1. And when we divide these two out, we may now divide out this ln with the exponential. All right? So what's next? Uh, so 2 minus 2 to the negative 1. Let's leave it as 2 to the negative 1 for now. And well, of course, let's use the laws of exponents to clear those negative exponents. So 2 to the negative 1, what is that equivalent to? Anyone? 1 half. One half. So that's uh, 2 minus 1 half, 2 plus 1 half. And of course, you might want to add this invisible ones. So the, in a way that the GCF, or rather the least, no, the least common denominator, uh, it's easier to find. And we do that by multiplying numerator and denominator by 2. So 2 times 2, which equals to 4. And, whoops, okay, I need to move it a little bit. The camera is here. All right, 4 minus, okay, 2 times a half, they both cancel to 1, and same in the denominator, 2 times 2 and 2 times a half, so that's a 4 minus, or rather plus 1. That means 3 fifths final answer. All right. So again, these kind of exercises are a great opportunity to put together all properties of logarithms and exponentials, keep them fresh for what we actually, we will, we will still do a lot of L capitals later when we cover infinite sequences and series, and this is gonna come to play a lot. All right, so questions about this couple of examples or about anything on hyperbolics, definitions, all that? All right, 
let's see what's next. Oh, yes, let's do the algebra. We already did the arithmetic, play with numbers. So let's do algebraic manipulations involving these hyperbolic functions. And um, once we're done simplifying this, we will find another very interesting connection uh, with the um, conic sections and how we define this um, hyperbolic functions as analog and analogously to the trigonometric well we'll see so number one well this is the same as saying cos t to the second power all i'm doing is just putting brackets in this case around so it's easier to recognize and set up the definitions in terms of exponentials. All right. <clears throat> and yes, in this case, we change the t, the x for the t. It doesn't matter. That's just uh, the uh, the dummy variable at all. So in this case, what do we have? E to the x plus e to the negative x, which is the definition of cosh. The whole quantity squared, and then minus e to the x minus e to the negative x, which is the definition of sinh, the whole thing squared. All right? So here is the thing. So there's a few ways to square those quantities. Well, number one, let's square the numerator and then square the denominator. So when we square the numerator, let's just leave it e to the x plus e to the negative x to the second power 2 squared equals 4 minus e to the x plus e to the negative x squared over 4. So, to square the binomial, you have a few options to go about that. Number one is to rewrite that as the product of that quantity by itself in FOIL. Uh, but I think that might be time consuming, but if you prefer to do it that way on the exam or when you're doing the homework, that's fine. However, you could use the binomial square formula, which, well, it's not necessarily a shortcut. It's actually the result of foiling those two factors. So let me write that down. So when we have a plus or minus b, whatever it is, quantity squared, that's always the square of the first term two times the product of the first and the second and the square of the second term. And well, so for the middle term, either plus or minus, depending on what we have, and the last term is always positive. All right. And so in this case, well, we're going to use, actually, we're going to use both. I think I messed up, a, messed up a sign over here. This should be a minus. That's a cinch. And yet we're going to use both. So uh, let's see. So we're going to have e to the, how did I set it up? OK. All right. So e to the x quantity squared uh, plus 2 times e to the x times e to the negative x plus e to the negative x quantity squared. And then minus basically the same but the only one that changes is the sign for the middle term e to the x squared minus 2 e to the x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x oh i'm running out of space this should be squared all right and of course each divided by four each divided by four now Another point that is worth looking for, that is worth noting, well, when we, when we multiply e to the x times e to the negative x, well, what's the result of multiplying e to the x times e to the negative x? One, and well, for two reasons. Number one, well, because we have the same base, e to the x minus x, that's e to the zero, which is one. Or the other way around, if you rewrite the e to the x as uh, e to the x, write this one with negative exponent down with positive exponent, that's also one. For whatever reason you prefer, 
So all these are going to go to 1 and 1. And let's apply the powers individually. So e to the x times, oh, good question. True or false? False. What should the result be if it's false? E to the 2x, because what do we do when we have the power of another power? We multiply the powers, right? So e to the 2x, 2 times 1, which is 2, e to the negative 2x. And then minus, be careful here, because that negative sign in here is going to affect all the terms over here. So I'm going to put parentheses around e to the 2x uh, minus 2 and e to the negative 2x, rather plus. The whole thing in this case divided by 4 because the same it's the same denominator. We can group it into a single, uh, into a single fraction. That's fine. All right, so let's see what we, what we, what we do from here. So uh, on the one hand, e to the 2x cancels with e to the negative, with, with minus e to the 2x over here. e to the negative 2x minus e to the negative 2x cancel. So we're going to be left with these two right here from the first group. And what is this minus minus? Isn't it another smile rule? And that's 4 over 4, which equals to 1. All right? And that's the result of simplifying cos squared minus sin squared in terms of exponentials. But, well, uh, so earlier I mentioned that there is a really interesting connection between how we define these functions. Well, so what we're trying to say in this case is, and let me give a different color, essentially what we're saying here is that cos squared t minus sinh squared t equals to 1. Well, Coming back to the definition in the way we define, or we make an analogy of the points around the unit circle. So we got points along the hyperbola where the cos represents the x minus y squared, which represents the y. Wait a minute, what's this? Isn't that the equation of the hyperbola? Right? So that's the connection, well, in, in the xy version versus the t version. In the same way that we define cosine squared x or cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals to 1, that's the Pythagorean identity for the unit circle, right? That means x squared plus y squared equals to 1 circle hyperbola, right? See the connection between the two? All right, so what's next? Of course, yes, let's keep moving on now that we did a little bit of algebra. So let's do, let's make another connection between trigonometry and the regular trigonometry and the hyperbolic trigonometry. Well, of course, we have identities and they look slightly different from the ones that we covered back in regular trigonometry so like cosine minus sine like cos minus sinh instead of cosine plus sine from trigonometry so all it differs in it's the sign in between the two the two terms and i think there's a little typo here well not a typo is missing a one equals one that's uh typically we we write this as a tangent plus one equals secant squared but in this case we have tangents tangent squared plus sitch squared equals to one. So the identities are very similar in this case. All right. And of course, um, you don't have to memorize these identities. That's fine. 
Uh, but I think it's something that is worth, is worth, uh, worth looking at. So let's verify one identity. So let's verify that cos of x minus y equals cos x cos y minus sin x sin y, which is very similar to the identity from trigonometry, you know, uh, for, okay, let's make, uh, let, me, let me make a comparison with the formulas. So cosine of uh, x minus y was cosine x cosine y and all they change is the opposite sign sine x sine y so that was the identity from trigonometry uh, and well again notice how some of the identities differ by a sign so in this case for the hyperbolic hyperbolic version we have the negative here instead of a positive all right uh, yes, this one is going to take a good minute to simplify due to the number of computations that we're going to do. So let's see. So let's replace all these hyperbolic functions in terms of its definitions from exponential forms. And let's see. So cos of x to the of cos of x minus y is e plus e to the negative, so that's x minus y, x minus y, the whole thing over 2. And well, what are we going to have here? Cos of x, that's e to the x, plus e to the negative x over 2, times e to the y, plus e to the negative y over 2, minus e to the x, minus e to the negative x, which is the definition of sinh in terms of x, and sinh y, e to the x, um, or rather y, minus e to the y, negative y, over 2. All right. Okay, so in this case, well, there's no way we can take advantage of the binomial square formula that I mentioned at the top of the page. And that's because, in this case, we don't have the same variable. So, unfortunately, there will be no way around it. We will have to do a lot of foiling for this. So, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, so, number one, e to the x times e to the y. So, that's uh, e to the x plus y. Okay, so that's the first one. And then, e to the x times e to the negative y, this will be plus e to the x minus y. So far, so good. Let's keep going. e to the negative x times y, this will be, okay, how did I write this? Okay, that's why I did write this one. So e to the negative x plus y. And let's put in the list for the first term e to the negative x, e to the negative y, that's uh, e to the negative x minus y. And the whole thing divided by 2 times 2, which equals 2, 4. All right? Minus. All right, let's do the same for the second term, but don't worry about the negative sign. We will deal with the negative sign at the end. All right, so e to the x times e to the y, that's the same. e to the x plus y, but be careful here because this is where the signs are going to be different this time. So e to the x times negative e to the negative y. So number one is going to be a negative term because of the product of two different signs. And the powers, well, we still deal with the powers in the same way, x minus y. And then negative times a positive, that's going to be another negative, e to the negative x, positive y. Negative x plus y. And last but not least, negative times a negative, which is positive, e to the both negative powers, in this case, negative x minus y. 
and then everything divided by 4. All right. So far, so good at this point. I know it's like a lot of writing. It's a lot to keep track of. Uh -huh. So, okay, let's see if we can uh, simplify stuff for now. All right. So what did I do next? So next, what I did is to factor some negatives. Yes, factor some negatives here and there. In particular, um, well, let me put everything together into a single fraction. So e to the x plus y plus e to the x minus y. And then over here, I'm going to factor out the, the sign, the negative sign from the x to make sure that all the x's have a positive sign. Why am I doing that? Because we want to get from the most complicated side of the identity to the easiest version of it. And notice the sign of x in this case. Isn't it a positive x and a negative y? So that's why I need, I'm in the need of factoring out this So that's a plus e to the negative x plus y minus, put parentheses around because that negative in front of this fraction affects this, will affect the sign of everything that's there. All right, so let's see e to the x plus y minus e to the x minus y, no problem, minus, oh, factor out the negative to make sure that x is positive and y is negative. That's what we want. We want x positive, y negative. Plus e to the negative x plus y. All right. And don't forget the 4 in the denominator. So... Can we start canceling terms? Why not? Okay. e to the x plus y minus e to the x plus y. Do we agree with this? All right. And then e to the x minus y with e to the, oh, be careful. This one, it's not going to cancel. I'm going to use a different color to keep track of it. Okay. Right, and well, actually, no, never mind. Okay, e to the negative x minus y minus minus that's a plus that will be a plus eventually. So those also add up. So that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna keep track of them in a diff with a different symbol here. And in this case e to the negative x plus y minus e to the negative x plus y. These two cancel indeed. All right. And what are we going to get here? So this will be on the one hand, okay, e to the x minus y minus negative. So that becomes a plus. That becomes a 2. e to the x minus y. And then, so that's, uh, that's actually, let me put a box, put a box, and let me put a box. And the next, E minus negative E, that's a plus E to the negative X minus Y, actually two of them. And... Let me use a triangle here, triangle here to make it a big difference instead. And the whole thing divided by 4. And well, these twos are going to divide out with the 4, e to the x minus y minus e to the negative x minus y over 2. But isn't this the definition of cos? Actually, plus. Isn't it the definition of cos? Not just x, but rather x minus y. 
all right, which is what we wanted to show. All right. Sounds good. Are there any questions about anything we covered up to this point? Okay, guys, so this is uh, what I would like to do. So how about we call it a day at this point and we do the calculus of the hyperbolics when we meet next time, tomorrow. So uh, for those of you that still need a lab code to add the class, come to me. Otherwise, if any of you have questions, also come to me. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, guys, by the way, so some of you were not here when I was mentioning about the what I uploaded to, to the Canvas workspace. So, so I have posted the updated version of, of the syllabus, the links on my YouTube channel to the most relevant um, videos that should be useful for, for the class. Also, another file that you can enroll in my MATLAB if in case that you haven't done that before, actually. It's a, if you haven't done it, it's important to do it because homework is already assigned. All right. Uh, if you have any other questions, just come to me. All right. Have a great day. See you next time.